everyone, it's Chelsea from Hip Rock to Your Studio, and today I'm sharing with you a speed up voiceover version of the Art Joy of Sharing live stream show from Thursday, the 23rd of July. Uh, today on the live stream, we were working with um, acrylic fluid media. I decided to do acrylic inks, and acrylic inks come in little bottles with little droppers. You can use them in a lot of different ways. I have three different brands. I have the Liquitex acrylic ink. I have um, Sennelier uh, abstract and then I have Matisse in the Pam character colors. So I decided to work on two different pieces at the same time so that I could set one aside to dry a little bit while I worked on the other one. Uh, acrylic inks don't react very well to a heat tool. Uh, they tend to burn and bubble up uh, pretty quickly and so I just figured two things at once would be better. And it actually worked out great because I ended up with an abstract it, it, an abstract piece. doesn't look like anything. And then I ended up also with a expressionistic abstract piece. So you can kind of see the difference between those two styles. They're both abstract, but one uh, looks, you know, you can identify something in it. Whereas the other one is just more like feelings and shapes um, that and color that just is on there, but doesn't. I mean, it might remind you of something, but it, but that's to your own interpretation, not the interpretation of the artist. So I'm starting out with some washes. You can use acrylic ink as if it was watercolor, fluid watercolor, by mixing it with water. It makes it more translucent. Um, most of them do. There are some very, very opaque colors in the, the acrylic inks, of course, and then some that are more translucent, but they're, there's not, I don't think there's anything that's super, super translucent, except for maybe the yellow and yellows just tend to be translucent. So I'm putting washes of clear water and then adding the ink and then blending it into the water and letting it, it, uh, soak out. This is a piece of watercolor paper. I think it's 140 pound, uh, probably 300 GSM watercolor paper. And I spritzed it on both sides with water before the show. And I taped it down to a cutting mat so that it would remain flat ish. <laughs> it did warp a little bit, but, um, because I didn't want pooling, I, I knew I was going to put a lot of water and a lot of wet stuff on there. And I didn't want places to pool up. I was not 100% successful with that. There was some pooling, but I just uh, used a paper towel to kind of soak up areas that were pooled up. Uh, there I was talking about putting some of the acrylic inks, drawing with the acrylic inks on the gel plate and letting them dry um, just to, as an experiment. Peg also did a lot of that on the show today. So you could go and watch her speed version if you want to, or watch the actual real time live stream recorded, uh, gives you, gives you an idea of how long these things actually take as opposed to me speeding it up. So then I put that one aside with the water washes on it to dry a little bit. And I moved to my second one. This is also watercolor paper, but this one has been gessoed first. And I wanted to mess around with the inks with some alcohol. Uh, rubbing alcohol, 90, this is 91% rubbing alcohol. It has a resist property to acrylic. And you can do some pretty fun things with it. Um, I mixed a little bit of the alcohol into the some of the paint. And then I dropped it with a uh, pipette onto the paper. And then I surrounded it with some other alcohol that has been put down with pipette and then used a straw to push the, the ink into the alcohol and get it to kind of um, thin out, spread out and be, be kind of like a fade sort of so that it's darker in one area, swooshing out to a lighter area with um, organic shapes I can't control this. I'm just blowing air on it with a straw. Um, if it made me a little bit dizzy, so uh, another choice would be like canned air. It's that would be pretty fun if you had some canned air that you use for for cleaning your computer, um, keyboard, and stuff like that to blow the stuff out of it. That would be fun to use with it. I don't have any of that, um, or perhaps some type of a puffing tool. I do have have a. Uh, it has a, a bulb on it with a point that I could have tried, 
but my hand is very achy. We're having um, storms and the barometric pressure is, is much higher than normal and I've got achy hands <laughs> and knees and things. So that I guess that just means I'm getting old. It's weird. It's strange. But anyway, I decided I didn't want to squeeze any bulbs. So the first color I used was called Venetian Pink. It actually looks red, but it is a pink. Then I switched over to some orange. Um, I forget which orange this is, but I think this was the Liquitex one maybe, or it might have been the Sennelier Abstract. I'm not sure. But I, I blowing it in the opposite direction, uh, the orange, and then I just continue on with different colors, just playing around, 100% playing around um, with this mixing of the alcohol and adding more colors on top. I even do drip some alcohol. Uh, when you have a wet acrylic ink, and, or actually even wet acrylic paint, it doesn't even have to be ink, and you drip alcohol onto it with a pipette, it makes these little round marks where the, um, the alcohol has pushed away the pigment and made like a round, uh, it's kind of like a donut. You end up with a dark spot in the middle and then a, a lighter spot around. So I guess I could just say it's a donut. <laughs> but it's, it's fun to mess around with alcohol versus acrylic whether you're doing it with paint or um, with the inks. The inks are just wetter, so you get more instant effects. There I am dropping on the alcohol. See how it turns in kind of like a donut shape? It's interesting, it pushes out. It ca it's, it's the same type of things that you play with alcohol inks with. And remember this surface is sealed because I put the gesso on it first, so I'm able to do a lot of these things because it's not an absorbent surface. If I'd done all these techniques I did with the alcohol on the untreated paper, it would have just absorbed in and not moved around as much. Um, it would have just sucked into the paper. So that's what you have to think about when you're thinking about whether or not to gesso. To gesso or not to gesso, that is the question. So as you can see, this yellow is a lot more translucent than in any of the colors I've used so far. And I decided that I would try taking my plastic palette. This is just a, a piece of uh, acetate that I'm using as a palette because these are acrylic inks and not watercolors, although they do have some of the same properties. If you leave it to dry on your palette like you would a watercolor, uh, it will dry hard and you won't be able to reactivate it. If you put watercolor on a palette and let it dry hard, it still reactivates with water. So I think acrylic is much more, it's, it's better suited to people who like to make a lot of layers and like to make mixed media. Like maybe I want to go over the top of this background with something else. And if it was watercolor, it would move, right? But when it's acrylic ink, even though it might look like a watercolor, like on those washes on the first one I did, um, it will stay there like that and nothing will disturb it. So I could put more water washes on the top and still have the underlayer layer peeking through, or I could put a different product over the top of it. Maybe I want to use uh, some pastels. Maybe I want to use some acrylic paint. Maybe I want to use some other water soluble media. Um, I can do it over the top. So. I put that one aside to dry because it was getting pretty wet with all the alcohol. And I moved on to this one. Um, this one's going to end up being an impressionistic type of abstract because these look like flowers. I wasn't necessarily considering that they were going to be flowers until I started making the shapes. And they ended up being flower shapes. And I'm just using the little dropper on the inside of the bottle um, with the orange and then the white. The orange is semi-translucent, so the darker color of the wash was showing through, and that's the reason that I added a little bit of the uh, titanium white on the top. And then I'm just blending them up a little bit with a brush and kind of just connecting some of the lines. And they do really start to look like flowers now, right? It's like there's some flowers in front of a green grass and blue sky basically so it's no longer abstract because you can tell what it is 
or you can tell what I thought it was anyway, because I ended up continuing with that theme and making it into flowers. So I put on a little bit of the Venetian pink. I had some, some uh, mishaps with this one. <laughs> a couple different mishaps. Today was one of those days. But um, what ended up happening to it at some point is I, it wasn't dry. And I decided to take a photo of it. And I laid it on my bed to take a photo. And then I was moving a pillow out of the way. And I put a pillow right over the top of it while it was still wet. And I didn't fix it. So it looks like it looks. But it looks better here <laughs> than it did in the finished um, project because I've got, you know, brighter colors in the center where some of that wet paint got taken off over the top with my pillow. And I had to take the pillowcase off and run it to the the um, washer. You know, this this was one of those days. So I'm trying to to pick up some of the pools. It's now pooling a little bit because the paper has buckled even though I have it taped down and I had sized it and everything, it still buckled a little bit. So I'm getting some pools, but I'm adding some leafy shapes with the olive color and then going over and adding a little bit of that lighter green to it too. And those two colors end up blending together and drying down uh, much, much duller you know, more dull than uh, they were when I put them on, which was kind of sad because I, I thought they looked pretty good when I put them on. So back to the other one. It's dry now. I want to mess around some more with it. I decided because there's a lot of orange, I would put in a, co a complementary color, which is blue. Um, those are across from each other on the color wheel and add some more shapes to it. Uh, randomly so I got out a piece of string and I soaked up ink into the string and then just let it kind of flop down onto the paper. Um, I started with the light blue and then I add a little bit of teal color to it and that blob up there on the right hand side I don't like it so I end up wiping it off. Remember this is gessoed paper so I was able to wipe um, then I ended up getting more blobs. <laughs> The, the ink created a bubble inside this, the string and it wasn't making the same type of shape. But this was a lot of fun. Um, maybe I should have left it here, but I ended up working on it some more. Uh, still doesn't look like anything. It's just, it's random. So then I took that darker teal color. Or actually, no, I'm, I switched to a color called Midnight, which is from the Matisse line from Pam Carriker. It's like... Uh, Payne's Gray. It's a very dark blue, almost black color, similar to Payne's Gray. And I put some of that on and then I let it drip. And I, I didn't like the way it had lines coming down uh, straight after I'd done the dripping, letting the drip, letting it drip. And so I took some water and I'm just spraying just the edges and uh, fanning out those lines and then um, I, I like it better. Looks a little bit like a like a stormy sky or something. By the time this was done someone in the audience said that it looked like a wildfire. That it reminded them of a wildfire and that's pretty cool because um, we were dealing with some wildfires just recently right across from where I live. So maybe I had wildfire on my mind. I don't know. There's a storm outside. Okay, here's the next mishap. I spilled the acrylic ink all over the table, um, dripped onto myself, onto the floor. <laughs> it's one of those days. But I was able to fix the art fairly well by blotting up the ink and then using some more water to fan it out in that corner so that it didn't look like one white blob because I was losing my patience when that happened. <laughs> like really on a live stream. This was live people. This wasn't even a recording and I left it in because you guys need to see this stuff. You need to see what happens. It's not, it's not always perfect and you just keep going on. You just take it as an opportunity to figure out how to solve a problem. I really believe in that. 
So I brought the other one back, still not dry. I think this one wasn't drying very fast because it's taped down to the plastic um, cutting mat. It really did not want to dry. And so I just added some more light colors in the centers of the flowers and some splatters with that teal color. I really like the teal color, it's so pretty. It's just a really awesome color. And I was gonna draw some lines, which I did end up doing, um, but off, off camera. So I just used my Jumbo Jet Black charcoal pencil to draw lines around the flowers. And then I um, drew some, some circles in the center, you'll see. Um, I had to set that aside because it just wasn't dry. So I started messing with this one again. Not sure what I'm doing. Uh, I was thinking maybe I would blend out some of this and make some circular shapes. And eh, that looked pretty cool. I put a little bit more white because that one area had lost its white because I'd wiped it all off after I spilled it. And I still wasn't sure. Actually, as I look at it on the video, I kind of like it like that. But it did change. It did change again. So then I thought to myself, I thought, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to foil this. I'm going to put some metal, metallic foil on it later after it dries. And then I thought, well, I could do embossing powder. <laughs> and so I had embossing powder sitting next to me. And remember I said I didn't want to put a lot of heat on this because it, it tends to burn. Um, and then I dumped embossing powder on it. Yeah, this this is the, I went off the rails. This is how this stuff happens. So that's extra thick embossing powder. It looks kind of like wax. Um, and I heated that on and then I had some copper colored glass glitter also sitting there. And I decided that I would use the thick embossing powder because it didn't really make much of a difference to add the glitter to it and give some kind of little shimmery situation. And so that's what happened. I did that. <laughs> I hope you guys are enjoying this video. If you are, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on your notification bell so that you know when there's a new video. And of course, you can pin this on Pinterest, share it on Facebook, share it on any other social media uh, for people to be able to find my channel. So that is it for me for my abstract and my abstract expressionist and art with acrylic inks. Bye-bye.